several ports in California are now going to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, in the hopes that more goods are going to be able to move a little bit quicker. This is uh, definitely an interesting topic, the big story of the day. We're going to bring on uh, Thomas Maoli. He is an entrepreneur, and he's focusing on logistics and the supply chain. You could call him an expert when it comes to this kind of stuff. Thomas, thanks for being with us here on the show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's dive right in. Uh, would you consider what's going on right now a crisis? It's a crisis, and it's going to continue uh, all the way through uh, 2022. You know, I just came back from a, I'm a car dealer. I just came back from a, a dealer meeting, and there's a, the chip shortage is just going to go in through 2022, well into maybe 23. You know, and my I, I, my background is logistics. I started a global logistics company in the early 80s and, and ran that company. And so I understand supply chain and logistics. And this is a real crisis because this is not just supply chain. We have a, we have, we have a backside to this, and that is the demand. The demand has risen so great because of COVID. And the, with the break in the supply chain, we're really at a, we're at a critical point right now. I want to bring into uh, this conversation the Biden administration, because uh, this isn't necessarily a new issue. We had to talk tariffs under the Trump administration. But how do you feel like Biden is handing, handling this at this point? Well, listen, I think, you know, it's great to think that the ports in California are going to open up. I think all the ports should open up 24 by 7. We've got to get the products into the U.S. and we got to get them out to the consumers and to the manufacturers. And we, we need to do whatever we need to do that. And, that, and if, if that's work around the clock, that's what we need to do. You know, part of the issue is not only... Uh, on our side, but it's on it's on China's side. You know, I, I happen to believe that China's holding back goods and they're trying to cause, you know, some harm to our economy. And and we're allowing that to happen. You know, uh, President Trump had it right when he when he put the tariffs in place. Um, and, and I think by Biden, you know, not dealing with this issue, um, I, I think it's going to cause major, uh, you know, major, major issues across this country. We're going into a holiday season. People need supplies. They want to buy gifts. Um, they want to go out and buy, you know, iPhones and iPads. And when those things are not available, you know, the consumers are the ones that are going to take the brunt of it. And, and because of it, it's even deeper than that. Prices are rising. We have a major inflation issue in the U.S. And listen, it's the president's job to step in and do something about it. And I don't see him doing it. So, yeah, but there's people behind all of this that's going on right now. Do you think it's actually possible for these workers to be working 24-7? What are the unions going to have to say about that? Well, the unions are not going to allow them to work 24 by 7. We've got to bring additional staff in. You know, listen, we have we have a, a major unemployment issue in the country. Those people are unemployed. Let's bring those people in and put them to work. Let's start unloading these containers. You know, when you when when you hear stories about the ports and 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 in Port Newark and in California, and there's there's containers out at sea and ships out at sea with thousands of containers, and they can't get them in because they don't have the workers to unload them. That's an issue, and the government needs to step in and do something about that pay these people that are unemployed to go and unload these containers and get the products out to the manufacturers and the consumers so that we can keep our economy going. For people who might not quite understand how we got to this point, how did we get here? Well, listen, we got here because of COVID-19. You know, during COVID, everything was shut down. Ports were shut down. Manufacturing was shut down. Everything was shut down because you'd have one, one port or one uh, container company have one person that had COVID and we shut the place down. You know, that was another governmental issue. You know, yes, we didn't know the, the extent and the damage that COVID could cause from a health uh, standpoint, but economically it was, a, it was a major destruction to this country. And, you know, manufacturing plants, uh, you know, car assembly lines, they closed down because one or two people in the place had COVID and, and now we're paying the price. Yeah, I want to get into uh, one of these other critical workers that we need in order for the supply chain to work, and that's truck drivers. We have a shortage of truck drivers yes. right now. Um, how do we fix that? Biden mentioned that a little bit today, saying he wants to speed up licensing for them. Um, but do you think that's possible, and is it going to be quick enough? Well, you know, listen, it's not just the truck drivers. You don't have enough trucks on the road. So, you know, and, and when you have a manufacturing and a chip problem, you can't manufacture these trucks fast enough so you can license faster. That will be a help. 
but it's not going to it's not going to get the trucks that, that we need on the road fast enough to be able to solve this problem. This is this is going to be a, a long term epidemic. It's going to go on for at least another year, possibly two. I don't see it getting fixed right away. And, yeah. and you know, a, a lot of the labor that we that I just talked about, that, that, that the government should be paying extra money to go in and help unload these containers. If they pass the infrastructure bill, those people are gone. You know, who's going to who's going to support this infrastructure the, the all the construction workers and the laborers? Where is it going to come from? Hmm. So there's probably a lot of people who are watching this right now and uh, we're throwing a lot at them. How is this going to yes. affect them? How is this going to affect the well, average listen, it's person affect who... It's gonna, the first place it's going to affect them is obviously availability to products on the shelves. But the bigger place it's going to affect them is in the pocketbook. And, and it's, it, you know, we have, it's going gonna, it's gonna to push inflation. Inflation is already rising. I don't think it's stopped. It's going to continue to go because as this demand continues to rise and the, the supply goes down or the supply is not backfilled and we don't have enough supply, prices go up. It's, it's basic economics, and that's what's happening in the country today. If you were to be able to sit down with the Biden administration at this point in time, uh, or the people who are in charge of making this run, maybe officials out in California, what would you say to them? How would you say that you can solve this problem? Well, listen, the first thing they have to do is they have to they have to prioritize. You have to figure out what the priorities are in this country. Obviously, critical supplies are important for people's everyday lives. Those are the containers that need to get unloaded first. Those are the, 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 the supplies that people need. And then we have to go backwards and what's critical. And, and you know, I, I, that's really the way that I would solve the problem. I would I would prioritize the container unloading. And then the second thing is I would take the labor pool that's unemployed today and and I would I would bonus them to go out and get take jobs to unload these containers so that they can get them out and get the supplies to where they need to go. But pri but prioritizing which supplies are critical is the most important thing. And I don't think they're doing that today. They're just opening the first container that hits the port. And that those supplies that are that they're wasting the time to unload those containers may not be that critical. Hmm. And so you're saying incentives for these people, because, I mean, we've seen a lot of people are at home right now, still not working, still unemployed. Yes. You know, how, how do you get yes. them uh, motivated and, and wanting to take a job like this that typically wouldn't be a high paying well, job? Yeah, well, listen, money motivates people, you know, it, it makes people get up in the morning and go to work and they want they, they want to support their families. They want to make money. And if, if the government steps in and motivates them, this is you know, this is not skilled labor to unload a, a, a container. You know, we, we need skilled labor to drive trucks. You need CDL license and special training. But to unload these containers, you don't need skilled labor. Um, we can incentivize these people to get out there and help these container companies to get these containers unloaded. And again, like I said, you need to prioritize um, what the critical supplies are that are on those containers. And those containers need to get unloaded first. OK, say all of that happens. What do you think the timeline would be to get things back on track? Oh, I think we're 12 to uh, 18 months, maybe two years into this process. It's going to be a while. You know, the backlog is big. The the supply, the, the demand is growing on a daily basis. People are getting back to normal lives. And as that demand grows, it's going to get harder and harder to keep the supply going. Hmm. Especially uh, as the holidays approach and, and things really start to pick up. Uh, we can see the pandemic yeah, listen, opening Apple, up. Apple, Apple already announced that they're they're taking a hit because they don't have chips for their iPhones. So you know it's 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 gonna it's gonna roll, and and people are gonna people are gonna pay the price in their pocketbook. All right, all right, Thomas Maioli, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the show. We appreciate you breaking it all down for us. Thank you.